this is Roberta Foster. Welcome to today's edition of the Author's Corner, brought to you by KNEO 91.7 FM, The Word. Today, I welcome Dr. Brock Hollett to Author's Corner, and he has written the book, Jesus, the Jews, and the End of the Age, What the Bible Predicts About the End Times. And he'll be telling you more about how to find the book at the end of the program. Before we get into some questions, let me tell you a little bit about him. Dr. Brock D. Hollett is a board-certified physician and psychiatrist in Sarasota, Florida. He worked toward a Ph.D. in Religious Studies and History at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And he has served as an adjunct professor of Biblical Studies and Science for six years at Southeastern University. So, Brock, thank you so much for finding time to chat with us today. Yes, thank you so much for having me on the on the program. So, the book of Revelation in the Bible and the end times is something that can be very confusing, also very interesting for a lot of people. Um, who do you feel would be most interested in this book? So, this book is for any Christians or any anybody interested in end times, uh, you know, the theology of what the Bible says about the end times. And so it really has a, a an audience that is, is fairly large. So I would mm-hmm. say if you're a reader at all and you are uh, interested in what's going to happen, you know, in terms of the Bible predicting the future and whether or not we're living in the end times and whether or not, you know, the nation of Israel will play a role in ushering in mm-hmm. uh, Christ's return from heaven, then this is a book that you would want to get. Excellent. Sounds intriguing for sure. Um, so we hear a couple of different phrases. And um, so what's the difference between the phrase the end of days and end times and even last days? Can you <laughs> separate those sure. out for us? You bet. So basically in a, in a biblical framework, uh, the time right before Jesus returns from heaven is called the time of the end. Right. Um, when you read what Jesus said, for example, in his last major sermon um, on the Mount of Olives, even at the very last uh, few years before his return, he says the end is not yet. So really, the end of the age is a very specific term about, uh, you know, the days leading up to the day of Christ when he returns. Um, the last days is a little bit different because the last days really deals with the entire period there's a couple of different views on it, but typically it's understood as the entire period from the first coming of Christ, when he came to die on the cross and rise from the dead, mm-hmm. and ascended to heaven and uh, established the New Testament Church, until the time when he returns in glory. Um, there is a minority view about what the last days is, and they basically say that uh, the last days is the same as the, you know, the time of the end, but that it has, in a mystical way, penetrated into the present age, in a in you know, because Christ came and because mm-hmm. he rise, uh, raised from the dead and so forth. And then, um, what was the third one you asked me about? In, time, in times, yeah, in times is just the, the time of the end, so those would be synonymous terms. Okay. All right, well, one of the things I'm most interested about is uh, how the Jews are involved in the end of the age, or end times. And so... Um, it says in chapter 14, uh, titled, All Israel Will Be Saved. And um, I actually heard a little bit of a discussion on this, but didn't get the whole thing when I was driving. And so enlighten us, if you would. How how do the Jewish people um, come to salvation? And what about this word, all? Great. That's a great question. So... This is a, a important theme of my book, and when you talk to New Testament scholars, you know, they will generally, usually the controversy surrounds um, the Apostle Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapters 9 through 11, and so there's debate on both sides as to whether or not all Israel being saved refers to the nation of Israel, um, you know, the state of the Jewish nation um, mm-hmm. and the Jews throughout the world, or if it's talking specifically about the Church and how the Jews are a part of that. Mm. And I would argue that it's a both-and, but I wouldn't limit my discussion to just that one area, which is generally where we focus. I would go all the way back, you know, to the beginning of the Bible in Deuteronomy, which is the fifth fifth book, um, and so it's the last book of the Pentateuch where the prophet mm-hmm. Moses talks very clearly about the nation of Israel being saved at the time of the end. He's clearly talking about um, the ethnic uh, nation of, of the Jewish people. 
Now, he's, uh, that isn't to suggest that the Jews will be saved apart from becoming part of the Holy Church and being mm-hmm. part of, of, of knowing who Christ is, but quite the contrary, that they will actually, through this time of great trouble that's coming on the earth, um, I believe in our, in our days very mm-hmm. soon, but certainly in the future, um, part of the purpose of that is to bring the nation of Israel and the other nations to know Christ as Messiah. And so there will be, um, of course, there will be a lot of catastrophes and crazy stuff on the world that we're starting to already, I think, see, Mm -hmm. but it will intensify as the end nears. And as that happens, the Jewish people will will come to saving faith. So the survivors, the scriptures tell us, and the Old Testament prophets tell us that the survivors of the Jewish nation will come to faith. And of course, the survivors amongst the nations as well, many of them will come to faith as well, because the church is comprised of both Jews and non-Jews, or Gentiles, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so there isn't going to be any special allowance for people of the Jewish um, background to just be allowed into heaven, regardless of what they believe. They still have to believe on Jesus as the Lord and Savior, is that correct? That's that's correct. And so there's only one door, one way. Um, you know, apart, the Apostle Peter made it clear that um, it's through the name of Jesus that, that uh, there is salvation and no other, that he is the only way. And so that is true. Now, um, you know, that, and that's part of the purpose that we see in Deuteronomy, is that the nations who already, many of them who already know Christ, mm-hmm. will provoke the Jewish nation to, to jealousy mm-hmm. for their Messiah. So God didn't just wash his hands of the Jewish people and say, well, they're no more, that nation's done, and I, I no longer... No, quite the contrary. This is an eternal nation that God has every intention to graft into, back into the original olive tree, so to speak, and bring uh, what he calls the one new man, or the one new humanity, or uh, the manifold wisdom of God, which is the Holy Church comprised of Jews and Gentiles. And so he's going to bring that to a fullness, because his purpose is to make the two one. Mm. Well, we certainly have a lot more to talk about with Dr. Brock Hollett. He's the author of Jesus, the Jews, and the End of the Age. And uh, so let me just remind you, we're listening to uh, Author's Corner on 91.7. Also, if you miss any part of today's interview or because it's filled with so much information, you'd like to hear it again, you can find it now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. So let's um, go back to just the establishment of your book or how it's written. In here you say that your book evaluates virtually all of the biblical prophecies regarding the end of days. And so this is certainly one of the unique features of your book. And so tell us more about that and what are some of the other unique features. So the book itself is laid out fairly topically, but somewhat chronologically as well. But the purpose of of going through all these passages is to give the full picture of what the Bible says about the the time of the end. Mm -hmm. So it focuses on, it's over 400 pages in the hardback, and it's beautifully designed by the group that put it together, and I would encourage you, if you're able to get the hardback, I would encourage that. But it also comes on ebook as well. And part of the goals of the book is really to help the reader Um, Because you can get lost in the quagmire of, uh, you know, putting the pieces of Scripture together and understanding the prophecies. So my book actually lays it out in a systematic manner that's clear and concise to really help the reader grasp not only the full and big picture of what's going to happen leading up to the return of Christ, Mm -hmm. his return, and then then the events following it, but also also to um, do so in a way that helps fill in the details and pull the pieces together and bring, bring, bring those puzzle pieces into a real panorama of what the Bible says. And so I really avoid also the sensationalism that you read in a lot of uh, po- you know popular prophecy teachers that mm-hmm. espouse different views and so forth. And I really focus in, what does the Scripture say? And it's faithful to what the the views of the Holy Church Fathers and their interpretive grid for understanding the text. Mm -hmm. And I include many, you know, comparative Bible uh, uh, passage tables, diagrams, and illustrations to help with the reader's understanding of the content. And I also provide a a very, um, you know, very large Scripture index at the end. So if you want to know... If you've got a scripture in mind or you want to go back to a scripture, it tells you what page those uh, Ah. passages are discussed on. Well, that's exciting (laughs) or very informational uh, because I did look at that in the back of the book and I was like, 
wow, how many books of the Bible did you not include in your the writing of your book? <laughs> but I didn't take time to add all that up. <laughs> yes, yes. There are very few that aren't discussed. Yeah. Um, I tried to be as comprehensive as I could, and that was one of the goals, because there's really nothing like it in the market. I mean, you won't find anything close to it for the last couple of hundred years, as far as I'm aware, that really is a comprehensive treatise on the end times. Mm. Well, of course, we can't talk about the end times without the reference to the uh, origin of the Antichrist. And you talk about that um, in in your book, so speak to that for a little while. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the historic Church, and for that matter, prior to that, within Judaism, there is a clear teaching about a final Antichrist. Um, the Apostle John tells us in the New Testament that there are many Antichrists, those that mm-hmm. deny that the person of God has come in the flesh. Those that deny that are, are Antichrist, according to the Apostle, and there are many of those. Um, but, but there is also a clear teaching in Scripture that there will be a final Antichrist who will be the composite fullness of all the power of Satan that will come on the earth, that he will take an incarnation, or he'll be in the flesh, Um, And he'll be the antithesis of our Christ. So, you know, Christ came in the flesh, and Mm -hmm. he is the promised seed of the woman that we see in Genesis 3.15. And this is the seed of the serpent that we see in Genesis 3.15. So there are those two seeds, both individual seeds and corporately their followers, um, that are basically the two threads of people throughout Scripture, right? And so they Mm -hmm. each have a incarnational uh, person that comes mm. on the scene. And so this final Antichrist is uh, will be part of the Great Tribulation that's coming on the world just prior to uh, the return of Christ. And we see that, you know, several places in Scripture, not the least of which would be like Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Got time for just one more quick question. Um, in the book, you talk about a great test that Christians will experience during the end of days. And give us a little insight into that. So we see as early as uh, Numbers chapter 24 and um, Deuteronomy as well in in the Song of Moses near the end of the Pentateuch of the Bible, we see a theme developing of a period of great tribulation. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Old Testament, it's it's basically described as a tribulation that will be, uh, you know, primarily for the nation of Israel— but that is expanded upon in the New Testament, and it, and it becomes clear by the time of the Apostles that this will be a tribulation not limited to Israel, but the epicenter will be in Jerusalem, but it will encompass the whole world. Um, Revelation chapter 13, for example, says that when the Antichrist rises and this period of, of trial comes on the earth, that every nation, kindred, tongue, and people will be coerced into mm-hmm. following and worshiping this beast, mm-hmm. this Antichrist, and his system. So we're seeing a a move towards globalization in the world, and many pieces are lining up even now in our day uh, that could very well precipitate and trigger this this great event. And So Mm. there will be a final battle between good and evil. This apocalyptic approach is something we see all throughout the Bible, and, uh, and it's laid out very clearly. But the purpose of the tribulation is not to bring judgment and doom and gloom and um, all these bad things. I mean, there will be judgments and so forth, no question. But it ultimately is to bring about a, um, a purification of God's people, mm-hmm. a final witness before angels and before uh, the, a, a watching world that Christ is king and that he alone will get all the glory. Yeah. And so that's really the overview of the purpose of the tribulation and why God is allowing the enemy to do these things in the final days, mm-hmm. is to bring about his greater glory. So I discuss you know, both sides of that throughout the book. Wonderful. Well, certainly a lot of information has been shared with us today with a lot more left behind in the book um, called Jesus, the Jews, and the End of the Age, written by Dr. Brock Hollett. And so, Brock, why don't you tell our listeners how they can find out more about this book and any other resources you have in conjunction with it? So the best way to get the book is to go to Amazon. Um, it is on Barnes and Noble and several other places as well, but you can either get the hardback or the ebook at this point on Amazon. And so um, you can go to Jesus the Jews and the End of the Age on, on Amazon.com, and you will see the book cover. And just above it is a link called Look Inside. And if you click ah. on that, you actually get five free chapters wow. to read. 
to see if the book is for you. So I would encourage you to do that. I'm convinced you'll want it once you read those, even part of those chapters. I think it will whet your appetite enough. Also, you can go to my website. My author website is www.broxalter.com. So like a church altar, broxalter.com. And there I have all my interviews posted and um, about my book and also my two previous books, Demoking Preterism and Moshiach Allen, there as well. Wonderful. So one more time, the book we've been talking about today is Jesus, the Jews, and the End of the Age, written by Dr. Brock Hollett. And we certainly appreciate you sharing the insights into your book with our listeners. Thank you so much for having me. I hope it was as much of a pleasure for you as it was for me. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. This is Roberta Foster on the Author's Corner. Join us again next time. <laughs>